Hey guys, it's uh, crap product review time. I went out and found the cheapest possible hot air gun uh, on eBay, 20 quid. Uh, I didn't see this version that they're showing on the box because that has a digital display. Uh, what I saw is uh, this one on the side which just has manual dials for the temperature and airflow. Uh, as I say, it's about 20 quid. came a couple of days ago from the UK and uh, the only reason I fancy trying one of these is because unlike my IU one which is on the other uh, bench on the other side of the workshop uh, this one has just the main you know the, the mains cable going into it and the air is produced in uh, in the unit whereas my other one it's got a separate air supply that has to go down a pipe with the wiring inside it the uh, pipe falls off the uh, 852 sometimes and it's very short and not very flexible. So I thought just uh, one of these with a reasonable amount of cable, I don't know, three, three foot of cable perhaps. It's got a, uh, <laughs> I haven't looked inside it yet, but a fairly nasty looking mains adapter. doesn't have the correct UK pins that they supply instead. Uh, one of these. Now, I don't think no, there's no British standard markings on uh, on this, so that is probably completely illegal uh, in this country, and uh, the company probably need to be told about that. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to plug that back in again. I've just tested this out actually, and uh, I thought the smell of burning, slight burning, was coming from this just uh, heating up. In, in fact, it's not. If you, <laughs> if you sniff the power supply, that's where the nasty smell's coming from, not the actual handpiece. <laughs> so we're just going to plug that in. Uh, as I said, there are dials here. Uh, one, two, what is it? one to eight on air flow and temperature and uh, as usual with these you should start it at the lowest temperature uh, and the highest air just so uh, it can't overheat when you turn it on and turn it off it's not uh, too bad noise wise I'm just going to turn it on hopefully you'll hear it Unlike the uh, IO852, there is no cooldown period, so you hit that switch uh, and the element is full on and you haven't let it cool down by reducing the temperature and, and, and maximising the airflow, you're going to damage the element, I should imagine, fairly quickly. Uh, one thing I did notice, uh, the on-off switch here, you can probably see, is already hanging out of the body. It's never been clicked home uh, properly. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see that uh, or not, but it won't push in anyway. So again, it's not really very good uh, safety. Um, you know, I haven't really thought about the safety too much, and I haven't put it through much of uh, uh, quality control. But does it do the job? Well, I'm just going to uh, put the uh, air up to maximum. Let that warm up a fraction. And I'm just going to put the air to four and the temperature up to four as well. And we're just going to remove this PIC processor and a couple of resistors from this uh, this GHD PCB. I don't know whether I can zoom this in or not uh, and keep it in focus. Yeah, maybe.
I'm just going to risk the element so you can hear me. Um, the good thing with doing this, like this, is uh, normally I would flood the pins of the pick with solder, heat up both sides with the iron, lift it off, then I'd have to suck all the solder off, clean the pads, flux it, um, the same with the uh, mouths on here. But with this method, most of the solder's left behind, uh, and you could, in fact, uh, just re position the IC and uh, put it all back together again and the pins would uh, take quite nicely. It's a good idea really if you're going to do it properly just to clean this up with some ISO, tiny little drop of flux on there and uh, put it back together. Uh, same with the mouths, there's plenty of solder left on those pads, they don't really need re-soldering and I'm just going to put them back on and you can actually blow them into place. I could have done if I'd put the board level. I think we'll just risk that element uh, by turning it off too early. I'm just going to clean this up. So they've gone on there perfectly okay. <coughs> just going to inspect that. Alright, let's see if we can do a close up of this for you. I'm just going to zoom this out. Come on. Now, I don't know whether you can see that, that is soldered perfectly okay. Uh, all I did was let it go molten and it pretty much sucks it into place. Just a little tap if it needs a lining. And, uh, whoops, wrong way. Same with those mouths, no new solder, perfectly okay in this uh, situation. So yeah, this seems to have done the job. Three, uh, three different size nozzle, nozzles, as you'd expect, pretty standard stuff. I've just put the, uh, the middle one on there. It comes with a little plastic clip that just goes around here. Uh, two screws secure it to the desktop. I've actually mounted it underneath the desktop. Let me just show you. And that just clicks into place. Uh, and uh, there. So, yeah, for 20 quid, it'll be interesting to see uh, how long that lasts. And a bit of practice, I'm sure you can get good results on that. It's going to be perfectly okay for those ASF uh, 15s and that sort of thing, I'm sure. A lot, of, uh, a lot of heat in there. I was only using that on 4 and 4. As I say, it goes up to 8 and 8. Um, um, so yeah, 20 quid. Uh, not too bad at all. I haven't seen that digital version that's, uh, that's shown here, but yeah, I don't think that's uh, required really. So yeah, just thought I'd show you that cheapy. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.